Greetings, sailors, and welcome to me being very rusty at doing a thing. Yes, this is in fact an actual commentated replay, which uh, is current patch because just as I was thinking, okay, I think I'm feeling a bit better now. I think I can actually devote enough brain power and energy to start doing replay commentaries and maybe cover some of the backlog of patron replays. Lo and behold, a patch comes out for World of Warships which absolutely breaks the ability to look at old replays on old client versions. Like, totally. Totally and completely. It basically launches the Wargaming Center and that's that. Even when you try and launch current replays, it launches the Wargaming Center, but it will at least let you then run the replay. So, yeah, that's a bit balked. Hopefully Wargaming can fix it, but until that point, myself and basically anybody else that covers replays can only use ones from the current patch. So isn't that jolly fun? Now, as you are possibly aware, if you follow the channel, I have been doing lots of streaming of late, and it's all basically been stream highlights that I've been putting up for the last couple of weeks. The downside of that is, of course, I can only stream at 720, and uh, 720p rather, and uh, it's, you know, it's good enough, but it definitely looks a bit on the fuzzy side. There's possibly some clever way of recording at the same time you stream with OBS, but I don't know if I have the drive capacity for that uh, in terms of, um, you know, recording a four hour long stream locally to then actually be uh, edited into a, a couple of games that I can then put up at better quality on YouTube. So at the moment I've just been using the Twitch highlighting tool. However, you know, I do still sometimes play when I'm not streaming and this is one such game which was on the NA server and this is actually with one of my patrons, Armorama there and I'm actually going to take a moment to pimp his site or rather network of websites because he runs a, uh, uh, a network devoted to various things but principally model making, the old fashioned physical kind of model making. And uh, if you go and check out, uh, I'll, I'll put a link in down below, but yeah, you can find things like reviews of books, reviews of different model kits from different suppliers, pictures people have done of their own builds, all that kind of thing. It's, it's interesting stuff if you're into that sort of thing. So you can go and uh, check that out, certainly, but um, that's, you know, not what we're here for. We're here for this boaty things. Well, that was smooth. I did say I'd be rusty at this. And uh, in this case, it's uh, the Donskoy, the tier 9. Now, on my NA account, I did get as far as the Moskva. But I haven't then reground through the Donskoy to get the... Uh, it's the Nevsky, isn't it? Is it the Nevsky? I think it's the Nevsky. That's now the, uh, the, the tier 10 that comes after the Donskoy. So I will have to regrind that, so that's why I've got the Type 59 camo on here. And uh, aside from that, uh, I don't really have that many ships other than my uh, Soviet cruisers. I've gotten as far as the... I think it's the Oodloy? I think that's the tier 8 on the uh, destroyer line. And I think I've got either the Koenig or the Bayern. But compared to my EU account, it's uh, very few ships on NA indeed. And that's mostly because it's been for playing with patrons, so it's been far less of a, a priority for me. But even without the benefit, particularly of uh, uh, lots of premium account time, I've still, with that single-minded purpose, managed to... You know, I still managed to get to the Moskva with some individual days of premium time, but otherwise just using flags and camos that I had available. But it goes to show that uh, war Warships is... like If you're prepared to just grind one line, even with a, a free account, uh, Warships is a lot more grind-friendly than a lot of other free-to-play games. Some might say it's too friendly, because then you can end up with less skilled players 
like, you know, you you pay your 25 gold a pop or whatever it is for the Type 59 camo and you can get to uh, Tier 10 without too much difficulty. And then, of course, you know, you buy some premiums, you convert some XP, you buy a premium account. You know, it really doesn't take too long. So, yeah, you can see some rather... Um, less skilled players around at the higher tiers maybe more so than other games but having said that the counterpoint is then you look at other games where it's, it's a lot grindier like war thunder or world of tanks and it doesn't stop there being bad players at the higher tiers it maybe just takes them a bit longer to get there it doesn't necessarily improve the quality it just you know changes the time scale a little bit so far this has all been quite cautious, I did push it initially to radar the cap and uh, rather than uh, rush in and do the risky thing, Armorama backed off in the Mogador, I didn't really get any hits on that destroyer but uh, they're now out of there, we did get the cap and now it's these battleships that are pushing in but uh, yeah I'm just keeping my range trying to set fires, not a huge amount of damage so far. And a fire on this Aya would, Aya what would be especially nice, just because um, you know they're they're flooding from Armorama's torps, and uh, therefore they don't have their DCP available. And having a fire on top of that would be rather unpleasant for them. But alas, it was not to be. And actually, that's it's the the Shima's torps that take them out. But there is now another battleship in there. We did initially do okay over on the A cap, but as you can see, we're about to lose our last ship over there, which is I think a Baltimore. I can just about read that on the the mini map. And it's a uh, Telenin and uh, 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 what is it not Benson? The the tier nine with lots of tops and I forgot the name. That one, you know the one. Anyway, so they're about to be in trouble and we will, will lose the A cap. Uh, Benham, there we go. Benson, Benham, close enough, you know what I mean. So really we have to try and now defend the caps because we don't have a huge points lead. We did have all three caps for a short time but not long enough to get us any kind of huge lead and they are actually one ship ahead of us right now so we do need to not be complacent here. So that Bismarck is continuing to cap B and I could try and rush in or perhaps Amarama could have tried to rush in and talk them point blank but there's also a curve first back there which could be a bit tricky and so uh, well I'm a bit too slow to get away with that so I'm coming over to this cap and Amarama is as well but he actually peeks out and uh, isn't able to spot me there's not enough of his ship to uh, see my ship I guess the I, th I think the spotting points are on the masts I've never been quite clear but uh, it, 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 I mean it's a bit like world tanks where the the ships do have different spotting points but world of tanks is a lot more complicated in that there's not only spotting points where you spot from but there's also different spotting points that can be spotted by enemy ships and I think it's much more unified in, in World of Warships, but it does still see, sometimes lead to situations where you might have a mast poking out from behind an island that gets you spotted kind of thing, or something like that where there's a bit of ship poking out but it's not enough to spot you even though you're firing from the open. So I might actually get a chance to use my radar again, there we go, there goes there used to Gotland, but there is still a Holland around here, there's a Georgia back there as well. And here's where I might slightly have messed up, because I could have tried perhaps to ping a radar here, but I wasn't convinced that the Holland would be close enough to actually get picked up. And so I am actually holding off on that for now, but I have also managed to... Uh, uh, I, I did get a double fire on that, uh, was it the curve first? I'm not sure, I got a double fire on somebody, so that's, oh yeah it was the curve first, so that's my first kill and an arsonist. And now there's just the Georgia, but that Halland is still running around 
doing bad things to our battleships as well as the Georgia and the Alaska. And as you can see there from that glimpse, one of them is very low health indeed. So, yeah, I really need to do my best to help bring this Georgia down and also try and tackle that Holland. And I get, like, maybe could have radared here. I've still got three radars left. We've lost the uh, Skovetsky Rossiya, but uh, we still have that Yamato. And it's entirely possible the Holland would now have been in radar range. So, yeah, that's looking back at this, this was not the best use of my available resources, let's put it that way. The immediate idea is take down the Georgia and then try and rush round and top that Alaska at point blank range, but real life has a way of throwing wrenches in plans and sometimes video games and other players in video games throw wrenches in plans as well. That's definitely going to be the case here. So I do finally think maybe I should radar. It's going to be too late for that Yamato, unfortunately. And it it also maybe I mean like maybe I was being too harsh on myself there. He is towards the edge of my radar range, and it's only him kind of opening fire that keeps him spotted. Like the moment he gets radared, he's just like, okay, I'm gonna open fire. Get a bit of extra damage out of it that way. Um, but yeah, because I left it till then, you know, he's just killed the Yamato. There was no chance with my rate of fire of killing that Halland with the health he had. So that was not nearly as useful a radar as it could have been. If I'd popped it a bit sooner, maybe the Yamato would have had a chance to pop some shots at them as well. But maybe not. You know, that's that's a big question mark. So there's the Georgia. Managed not to take any nasty damage from them. Now there just remains the Alaska and the Holland in my immediate vicinity to deal with. Meanwhile, we've got Amarama and our surviving other player that used to got land over near the Tallinn and their Benham. So we'll see what comes of that. The Tallinn, of course, also has a radar. But uh, yeah, sensing my motive, this Alaska has opted not to sit still and wait for me to come round and put a bunch of torpedoes into them, the rat bag. So we now have the chase scene portion of this replay. Now it clearly knows I've got torps, and of course when you're in this situation, it's an absolute dead giveaway when someone's turning around like this, and especially if you have priority target, when you have somebody targeted with your guns versus your torpedoes, one shows up and the other doesn't. So if that little one next to your detected indicator is flicking on and off, you know that somebody's looking at you with their torpedo target lead thing, which is of course the technical term. And so, you know, you can throw in the evasive maneuvers, but even if I don't hit with any of these, I'm forcing him to maneuver to lower his speed. But it is also making myself a little vulnerable with these angles, because those Alaska guns are jolly nasty. So the Hound's already dropped some torps on me. The Tallinn killed uh, Armorama, unfortunately. Uh, or was it the Benham? I didn't actually see who killed him, but the Benham's dead, and it just leaves the Ustgotland and the, the Tallinn in the middle, and all three of the remaining enemies are now looking my way. So this is a little bit hairy. I do have my... Uh, uh, Hydro, not Hydro, Radar still, but I don't have a Hydro is what I was going to say. I, I neglected to put the Hydro back in in place of the defensive, which is unquestionably the more useful consumable these days. And although I do then go, okay, I should probably try and figure out where the Holland is, and he turns out to be low enough health that, yeah, I can possibly finish him off. But his torpedo drop forces me into a not particularly comfortable angle. So the Tallinn gets shots on my broadside, but then the Alaska starts to get shots on my broadside as well. But somehow I'm not dead yet. So I complete the turn rather than turn back in. And the Alaska's not managed to kill me yet, and hopefully this will put me on a better footing in terms of angling as well. But oof, I do nearly come a cropper there. If I hadn't thought to pop the heel and, you know, I noticed that I was there, that might have ended me. As it is though, the Alaska has then made the fatal mistake of showing the broadside, so I've been able to switch to AP shells, finish them off, 
that just leaves the Tallinn, and we've also got the surviving Ustgotland capping A. So all of that has put us well over the top in terms of points and although I was really not expecting to actually come out of this alive I think even if I had died given that there's not that much time left yes the Telenin might have gotten to uh, cap the sea circle but I think we would have just hit zero time and uh, won on points if we hadn't hit a thousand first so just the Tillinian left, and it's a question as to whether they're actually going to pop out and say hello. Got my last heal going, and uh, yep, they do take the chance, but it's all too late to actually do anything, and he's firing high explosive shells anyway. Does mean I am denied, however, the, the Kraken, because we are about to win this on points. So no fifth and final kill for me, but I did get uh, Witherer and um, Dreadnought and the other one for fire and flooding damage combined i forget what that one's called but you know that one 2400 base xp and as you can see i'm not the only one that did quite well our thunderer had a uh, pretty decent score armor armor there in third place and that used to gotland with nearly 2k xp in fourth so yeah that was a pretty competitive game but because we grabbed that cap advantage and were able to keep that to some extent that kept us on top points wise and so once we were getting the kills even though it was fairly even in that regard uh, it, it turned out that we were able to keep that advantage rolling on and it didn't get away from us because uh, you know caps win games as it turns out so anyway, hopefully this was an okay video. I'm going to try and get some more proper replays going. But to be honest, I don't think my activity on YouTube... I mean, I know it was spotty anyway. But I think I am going to now be devoting that much more energy to keeping a regular Twitch stream going. Because quite frankly, economically, it just is a no-brainer. The amount I get from Twitch subs, even though I don't have, you know, a huge mountain of Twitch subs, but the amount I get from Twitch subs um, on a regular basis just blows YouTube ad revenue out of the water. Even if I was posting videos, like, every day and um, getting two or three times the number of views I do on my YouTube videos, I think Twitch would still win out on top. So, yeah, that's going to be probably my primary focus from now on but i do want to get back into do youtube as well so yeah hopefully you'll see more of these and you can enjoy the crisp 1080p as opposed to the slightly fuzzy 720p but uh alas until my internet improves i don't think i'll be able to get any better quality stream highlights than i'm doing at the moment but you know if you want to come and see me play live you can find a link to that down below and uh Hopefully you'll enjoy it as other people seem to have been. So that's it for now. Hopefully you've enjoyed this replay. And if you have, you can do all the usual things down underneath the video. And of course, as always, stay tuned for more.